Hey there guys, Mike here again. Thanks for clicking this video. Welcome to my shop. A while back I did a 6SN7 line stage for a new shop stereo system that I'm putting together and you can take a look at it right here. It's been working flawlessly and I've been really happy with the results of it. I just recently saw another YouTube creator reverse engineer this old military device and I kind of had a little epiphany and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's the preamp. I got it mounted underneath my workbench to keep it out of harm's way because it takes up a lot of real estate. As you can see the tubes are exposed and it's getting kind of grimy and filmy and stuff like that so I thought let's come up with a better solution for a shop preamp. So when I saw that video of that military device and how they stuffed all these electrical components into an enclosed vertical cabinet, I thought to myself, hmm, that would make a really good shop stereo. It would keep the dust out of it and it would keep everything out of harm's way. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to reconfigure this into a new vertical chassis and I'm also going to run 12 AU7 tubes. So these tubes are very similar to the 6SN7. So I will just to rewire everything to work these tubes and we'll stuff everything into a more compact enclosed vertical chassis. So we'll kind of do this old school. We won't use any type of CAD or SolidWorks or anything like that. We'll do up a manual drawing. We'll use some foam core board and some Bristol board here and we'll come up with a chassis design. Once we figure out all the pieces, we will go to the metal store and we'll get our metal. We'll get them to shear it all up and then we can start assembly. The OD3 tube is a regular tube and it glows. So rather than having a pilot light, we will just make a little view portal. And when it glows, you know it's on. The 12 AU7 will mount in behind the gain control on the inside. I only listen to a radio and my iPod. So I have an iPod jack in the front and RCA's in the back for the radio. So you can flick that on and off. Of course, the on off switch. I figured this will be about 10 inches tall, three or four inches wide. And we'll determine that once we do the mock-up. So the mock-up's all done, it turned out pretty good. Yes, it's kind of crude looking, but it gives us a really good indication of where all the components need to be and if there's any conflicts. It's basically going to slide perfectly in there. The one thing I did realize is that all the cuts and assembly has to be perpendicular to the front or else it won't slide into this thing. We'll make the middle out of aluminum, easy to work with, and the outside we'll make out of steel. So a quick look at our mock-up. We'll do the PSU on top there and we'll vent it out the top. We have our OD3 on the side and you can see it through the front of the hole there when it glows. We have the 12 AU7s mounted right there and we'll get access to the bottom to wire the, all the sockets up. And the power transformer will be right there and down at the bottom away from everything. So we're back from the metal store. I got them to share up some 16 gauge steel for me for the outside carcass. And for the internal frame, we're gonna be using this 14 gauge aluminum. So we did all the machining here on the outside carcass. We drilled out all the vent holes. We also cut out the rear panel for the AC in and all the RCA jacks. So we'll go ahead and we'll weld this all up. First part of the welding sequence here. I weld it on these little tabs here and this is what will retain the faceplate. Once the faceplate is done, we'll know exactly where to drill the holes and we'll tap it. And then that's what will hold the whole thing together inside this cabinet. So the carcass is pretty much complete. We still need to do some paint and primer, but we'll save that to the end. So the next step is to locate the thumb screw location so that will retain the amplifier inside this box. Here's the face plate. So basically we'll do like that. So we'll drill and tap the mounting holes and then we'll make some thumb screws for it. So now it's time to work on the internal frame. We're gonna mimic what we mocked up here. So this is just all the aluminum pieces that we cut up. We're going to put it all together with uh, machine screws and this angle bracket. So it's pretty much going to look like this. A 
little bit of a challenge. Uh, drilling and tapping all the holes and making sure everything aligned has become quite a daunting task, but it's coming along. So the basic frame is done and I got the thumb screws to be able to remove the panel. Turned out pretty awesome. So the internal frame is all completed. Everything lined up perfectly. So now I just need to get all the electrical components and place them and drill the attachment holes for all of them. I got all the holes drilled out for the front panel. It's all ready to go. I'm also going to machine this piece of aluminum tubing to recess in here a little bit, and that will encompass the OD3 tube to kind of channel out the glow a little better. So all the fab work is completed here. Turned out pretty good. Happy with the results so far. And it just slides right out. I have the board for the power supply unit ready to be populated. I have the standoffs there for the regulator resistors. The tube sockets are all in, transformers in, got the terminal strips for the tube sockets all done. I got the grommets for the pass through so there's no sharp edges. The RCAs are all mounted. And the transformer I'm using is a Hammond 290WX. So for color scheme, we're going to go with a flat gray color here. So we'll paint the outside carcass all flat gray. And then for the front panel here, we'll paint it white first. And with my label maker, we will make some proper labels for all the items here. And then we'll paint it gray. And then we'll pull off all the labels revealing the white text. So that'll give us a real authentic military look. I think it'll look pretty cool. So the next step of the process now is to add the stenciling to this control panel here. So the Cricut Joy has uh, two ways you can use this. You could use it on a computer or on your phone and it comes with an app. And in the app here you can see that I've already went ahead and I put the la labeling that I want it to cut out. We have on, off, rear, front, uh, gain, minimum, maximum, input, and OD3. So that's what I want to label. So this is removable vinyl. So that's good for stencil work, so it, it's easier to remove. So the vinyl is loaded, and now we just hit go. Vinyl's all cut, so now we're going to go ahead and weed it, which means we're going to pull off all the vinyl that we don't want. The weeding is all done. We're going to take this transfer tape here and we'll cut a section of it off, put it on top, cut it out all little pieces and then place it onto the control panel. Cut out the pieces here so I can individually place them onto the front panel. 
So the hard part here is just kind of getting it all centered. So the next part of the process here is to pull all the lettering off. The key here is not to let the paint cure, hour to two hours max, and then uh, you can start lifting up all the lettering. Uh, if you let the paint cure, you'll have a really difficult time pulling off all the lettering. I took the O off already, you can take a look. Looks pretty good. So let's do the rest of this. So we'll let this cure, and then we'll do a final assembly of the amp. So we're at my workbench here and the chassis is completely done and we're ready to do the final wiring. I think the chassis turned out pretty awesome. It's very unique looking. I redid the schematic to show the 12 AU7 tube. Um, it has a little bit different pin layout and resistor values than the 6N7 tube, so you have to pay attention. But basically the topology is exactly the same. This amplifier design has been around for a long time. Uh, a copy of this was kind of in the RCA receiving manuals. And the only thing that we're going to be doing a little bit different with this amplifier is we're gonna be installing an OD3 tube. So this is a 150 volt regular tube. So hopefully it makes the amplifier a little bit more linear and gives it a little bit more blacker soundstage. I'll be putting a link in the description below of the schematic, uh, the layout and the parts list. So if you wanna build something like this, you're more than welcome to. So a few things to note for wiring this up. We're gonna be using this Teflon coated solid core wire. Um, it's very forgiving wire. It's really easy to train. And when you actually solder and heat it up, the Teflon doesn't really burn away. It actually shrinks around the wire. So it makes it very forgiving and easy to use. We're gonna be using Schottky diodes for the DC filament circuit. Uh, these are three amp diodes. We have some shielded wire here for all the signal in and out. So we don't get, pick up any interference. As I mentioned before, the transformer we're using is a Hammond 290WX and this is actually the same transformer used in a Fender reverb unit. So this is Hammond Direct Replacement and it basically gives you about 306 volts DC at 27 milliamps. This is how I typically do my wiring procedure. I do all the AC mains first and hook up the transformers and hook it up to the switch. And then I do my DC filament circuit. So I build that circuit and wire it up to the tube sockets. Then I go ahead and do all my signal wires to the tube sockets and making sure that none of the signal wires cross over any of the AC lines and keep those far away. We'll do the power supply unit with all the resistors and then we'll do the final wiring of everything. So the solder I'm using is a Kester 6040 and it's a rosin core, it's 0.8 millimeter. Uh, this stuff is a joy to use, so do yourself a favor, get some good solder. For the soldering gun, I'm using the Haku 907 gun with a little bit of a knife tip on it and it's attached to the Haku 936 base. Wire this up and afterwards we'll run through the whole layout and I'll show you how I connected everything. And I'll also include that layout in the build document which I'll link below. So we're just wiring up the tube sockets here. And the one thing I like to stress is you should make a mechanical connection as well to the bottom of the tube socket here. Some people will just solder the lead directly onto the tab of the tube socket and you get a bad solder joint. So I make a little loop and I hook it through the hole, pinch it with a needle nose pliers and then make the soldering joint. So you have a mechanical and you also have a soldering connection. I use two types of strippers. I have these normal ones that have the cutter on them and you just normally slide them off. And then I also have this other kind that actually holds the cable in there and allows you to strip it. So if I'm in a tight space like this, it's a lot easier to just strip it like that. So the wiring is all done. It took a little bit extra time to make sure all the wire was trained all nicely. So when I do my layout, you guys can follow along perfectly. I did my resistance checks and my connectivity checks and I compared it against the schematic here and everything checks out. You wanna make sure that you do that so there's no dead shorts and all the values and the resistors are wired in the right place. So the next step is to put the tubes in and then wire it through my little current sink here. And if you haven't seen one of these, I have a video for that. You can take a look right here. 
Uh, this is current sync. What it does is it goes from the wall into here and then from here goes to the amplifier. If this light bulb goes on when I turn the amplifier on, then I know I have a dead short and the current is absorbed by the light bulb and not by any of the components, therefore saving the components. If it stays off, then we'll measure the B+, plus, the heater supply, and if that all checks out, then we'll hook it up to the amplifier and see how it sounds. The amplifier on and let's flick the switch here. B plus is climbing, so we're going up to 276. So I put the voltmeter on the other side of the OD3 tube and it's reading 148.5 volts, so about 150 volts, so that's pretty steady. So the OD3 tube is functioning as it should. So we don't have a dead short, so that's good. So let's go ahead and measure the heater supply. So the DC filament supply seems to be topping out here at about 6.1 volts. Anywhere between 6.1 and 6.3 is suitable. We don't want to go higher than 6.3. I do have a dropping resistor in there, 0.75 ohm. What I'll do is I'll take different 12 EU7s and see if that voltage change or not. But uh, anything above six volts seems to be okay for these tubes. Okay, let's see how it sounds. Let's plug in my amplifier and my tuner. We'll flick the switch here. BSC.bc.ca and start learning. Let's shop better to help us reach our goals so we can live healthier. Let's shop for style and comfort that stands the test of time. Let's shop smarter with daily offers and interest-free payments. Okay, so that seems to work great. I'll do a quick overview on the layout for you guys. We'll button it all up and we'll put it into the system. We have the incoming AC line comes in here to the power transformer. The line comes out to the switch and then back again to the power transformer. We have the filament circuit coming up into here is the DC filament supply. So we have their dropping resistor, the diodes, and then the filter cap and then a shielded cable goes in through a little hole and then to the bottom of the tubes there. The raw AC B plus goes up straight up and then enters out the top here and hooks up to the circuit board. So this is the power supply unit. We have the AC coming up to the bridge rectifier here. So we have four diodes and then we go to the filter cap. So we have the dropping resistor, dropping resistor, and then the bleeder resistor. I have a mismatch of uh, capacitors here because that's what I had in my parts bin. Then we have our two 10 watt 20k ohm resistors and those are in parallel and then we have our capacitor here for the od3 tube so everything wires up on the od3 tube here and then the b plus regulated b plus goes down so let's flip this over here so the b plus runs up here goes through the hole and supplies the tube so the b plus we have our power switch on and off we have our input selector front and rear this is all shielded cables here for the input selector. And then we have our resistors to the bottom of the 12 AU7. So the bias resistors and the dropping resistors. So it leaves the tubes and it goes through the portal again. So this is the output signal and it goes to the output capacitors. So this is left and right. And then it leaves the output capacitors and goes through a little portal to the other side. And that's where the output jacks are. I must say coming up with your own chassis design is uh, really challenging and it really tested my limits on layout and assembly of everything. One thing that I should point out is not all OD3 tubes are the same. Some of them have a mirrored top like this one here. So you can see the mirrored on and it wouldn't really show the glow very well if you did something similar to this. So this one in here now has a clear top and you can actually see a faint glow coming out from it. Well, I love the way this line stage turned out. It has a cool little industrial military look for it. It makes it perfect for a shop stereo system. I like it so much. I'm actually going to make a matching power amp for it as well. I have a bunch of these TV tubes, these 60 N7 tubes, and they make great little flea powered audio amplifiers. So it will match this perfectly. So please like and subscribe so you can follow along in this build. And as I mentioned before, I'll do a complete build document on this amplifier here. So I'll have a complete layout, parts list, and a schematic for you to follow along. And if you like building something like this please stick along and you can see how I make out with this one once again thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video